doctors and medical professionals of Reddit. What one medical fact do you wish everybody knew? Your immune system is one of the greatest assets you have and you never thank it. In your life, your body will autonomously eradicate between 6-10 cancers without your realizing. It will fight your infections, repair micro traumas and police the entire population of billions of cells in your body without your asking. All it requests in return is a little bit of health to preserve it. Stop smoking, lose weight, maybe exercise a little, don't drink so much. Your diet is so much more important that you realize. Nurse here, if you're an alcoholic that's admitted to the hospital, don't lie about how much you drink. There are drugs we can give you to take the edge off of withdrawals. It's safer for you and safer for us. We're not judging you, we have safety in mind. When I was on my pharmacy rotations, I remember a guy in the IQ for alcohol withdrawal. He was having such strong tremors that even benzodiazepines couldn't stop. He was there for a whole week. At that point, I promised myself not to have more than two beers at a time. Keep an eye on your weight. Rapid unintentional weight loss is often a sign something serious is up. Or gain. Was in the air last night. Overheard guy in front of me that he gained around 30 pounds in two weeks and could no longer walk. Based off his swollen abdomen and wet lungs I thought he was in congestive heart failure. He was room near me and it turns out that's exactly what he has. If your kid has a fever, and you give them Tylenol or Ibuprofen to bring it down, they are still freaking sick. You're only treating symptoms temporarily, not curing anything. For the love of everything holy, do not give them Tylenol and send them to school daycare sports birthday parties etc. To become patient zero and infect everyone else. I think there's a phenomenon for this, the 11 o'clock spike, which is when the meds wear off and the kid is feverish. And then the mom is pee when you call her to come get the kid. Doctor here. Most important rule. Know your own history and drugs. Our EMRs are too inefficient to depend on. Especially if you've been to many different institutions. Yes yes yes. It's in the computer is not enough and even if you are in the same town at a different health system and we can see some of your data from your usual doc EMRs are still pretty bad at talking to each other. If you have tons of meds make a list. Also when you get asked about if you have any medical problems diabetes and high blood pressure count, not just cancer and heart attacks. It's significantly more effective to prevent cancer than it is to treat it, but the world isn't interested because most people just want a pill to fix their problems. Don't smoke, wear sunscreen, don't drink excessively, get a bit of exercise and eat some goddamn vegetables, do those and bam, huge drop in cancer risk, but nobody wants to hear it. The pregnancy test you get in the air is no different from the one at the store and equally accurate. Viral infections cannot be treated with antibiotics. But that placebomycin though. Doctor here. Keep things out of your ears. Seriously. Safety professional here. This does not apply to earplugs in loud environments. If exercise were a pill, it'd be the most prescribed drug in existence. While elective brain surgery doesn't test that great, it still tests better than darting and exercise. Better off Ted. Volunteer SAR ship crew member here. When you suspect whoever is lying down is not breathing by themselves, begin CPR immediately and do not stop until medical professional arrives, even if this means that you have to go on for several hours. We do not perform CPR to have the patient miraculously wake up and make out with us. We do this to sustain the most vital bodily function, the circulation of oxygen to the brain, until we can get that person to a hospital. Stay at home with norovirus. Call and ask for advice don't come in and infect a bunch of possibly already ill people. Mental illness can be as serious as a physical one. Get treated, you wouldn't let a broken leg go. Bipolar disorder made me lose months of my life I do not remember and made me almost kill myself. Talk to your doctors if you're not feeling okay. Dentist here. Just because a toothache goes away, doesn't mean it's all better. Many times it's the calm before the abscess. It goes from dying, to dead, to abscessed in as fast as a day or sooner. Drug allergies and side effects are not the same thing. It makes you look like a crazy person when you have 20 allergies and 19 of the reactions are nausea. Epinephrine makes my heart race. Dot. Yes. That's part of how it works. 
1. Reverse cowgirl may be a fun position for you but please be careful girls. 2. Blood in your pee when not associated with pain and fever is something you need to get checked out. 3. Get that new ugly mole checked, especially if it is painful or bleeds spontaneously. 4. Boys, if you notice some irregularity growth in your balls please get it checked early. If your ball is the size of a grapefruit, ignoring it will not make it go away. It will just increase the risk of worse news than that you were fearing. It is much better to be labeled a worried well than the alternative. If we are stressed or rushed for time it's not personal, it's the system. We may not always say it but we are grateful for those who take responsibility for their health. The human rectum is nightmarishly elastic. Go on. Doc here. If you suspect a heart attack take an aspirin or two. Not ibuprofen. Not paracetamol. Not some other dumbass analgesic painkiller. An actual aspirin. Also get yourself to a hospital. Duh. But that aspirin might save your life. Edit. Yes. Chewing is better but if you swallow it whole that will also work in a pinch. It's much easier to remember take an aspirin. Especially if you're panicking. Than to also worry about how to take it. Aspirin falls apart quite easily in stomach acid. And it gets absorbed through the linings of your stomach either way. Always keep things as simple as you can. And get the basics down first. In a pinch you are much more likely to recall a random person on reddit saying. Heart attack equals aspirin. Than you are to also remember and don't forget to chew. Vaccines are safe and save lives. No. You're just trying to make us autistic. Edit. S. Forgot to put it there. Thanks for the upvotes. You should not stop an antibiotic treatment because you feel better already. Seriously. This is how we get super bugs people. Avoid grapefruit and grapefruit juice if you are taking some kind of medication. About 50% of pharmaceuticals on the market are metabolized at least in part by CYP3A4, which is inhibited by compounds found in grapefruit. A doc here. Medical fact. Emergency means potential loss of life, limb, or eyesight. It does not mean inconvenience, irritation, or chronic condition. Your sore throat evaluation in the ED is gonna cost you $1000. Go to an urgent care. Just don't lie to us. We don't judge you because your poop is smelly or you like to put things up there. Remember always, we've seen something far, far worse than the gerbil up your butt. Oh and don't freaking drink and drive. Some new updates because no one learns. I work in a burn unit. Don't put accelerants on a camp bonfire. Don't go back into a burning house vehicle airplane. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. This includes aerosol cans of stuff. Those blow up. Don't make meth unless you have an advanced degree in the field. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. Even if it just won't light. Don't let your pod handles hang over the edge of the stove where your kid can reach. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. Even if you've been doing it for years. Don't pick up containers of flaming grease and oil. Don't put accelerants on bonfires. Diesel is an accelerant. Don't keep electric cigarettes in your pocket. If you wear oxygen. Don't smoke with it on in your lap. Don't burn trash. You don't know what the frick's in there. Probably accelerants. Stop opening your radiator cap unless the car is cold. Carburetor injuries are common. I don't know how it happens. Help me out car people. Don't. Put. Accelerants. On. Your. Gadam. Fire. Know the signs of a heart attack and stroke and don't tough it out. These are time sensitive and potentially deadly events. Paramedic here. Super frustrating when I get a patient who didn't call early enough and because of that they can't get life saving treatment or the damage is already done. Edit. If you're having an EKG done tell them to run a 15 lead EKG. If they don't know what it is tell them to google it. Posterior heart attacks are missed because not many people know what a 15 lead is. It sucks when you have anxiety. The symptoms of a panic attack are awfully similar to a heart attack. I don't have the money to visit the O every time, so I admit to ignoring it. Some if my symptoms last for days. Not a medical fact, as much as it's just something I wish all patients would do, I'd love it if patients could bring a sheet of paper with all the meds they're on. Past medical history, past surgical history, allergies, and family doctor contact info. It's a small thing, but can be so helpful. Nurse and midwife here. I wish people understood that if they are receiving treatment for a condition, 
they still have that condition. Case in point, if you're taking medication for something you aren't suddenly free of that disease, your blood pressure meds are maintaining a normal blood pressure because you have the condition of high blood pressure, your insulin is maintaining your blood sugars because you have diabetes. Sounds simple but amazing how much people tell us they have no conditions but are on 1000 medications that tell a different story. I had one lady come into the ED with complaints of headaches. Stated that she'd been diagnosed with HIV 9 years prior. Hasn't taken any meds in the past 3 years because I'm undetectable and that means the virus is barely there anymore. Ended up having giant abscesses in her brain that required neurosurgical intervention. Not a doctor but something a doctor told me when the incident occurred. Girls if you get excruciating cramps at the time of your period and it feels much worse than it actually is, go to a doctor. When I was 13 I had already been confirmed to having a ovarian cyst, and it made it very painful for me during my periods to the point where I had passed out from the pain of it once. However at one point it felt much worse than it typically did and I blew it off as being because of my period. It turned out my appendix was bursting. The doctor told me a lot of women blow off period cramps because doctors tend to do the same. Don't, it almost meant life or death for me. I used to get such bad PMS that I would be vomiting, cramps where I was curled up crying, bad mood swings, the works. The doctor told me the pain was normal and I would grow out of it. Frick you, doctor. Turns out what I was going through was not normal, and my new doctor is great. Vet tech. Your cat is probably obese. So many people free choice their cats because it's easier or just way overfeed their cats because cats whine a lot. You're not doing your cat any favors. He is going to get diabetes. I'd guess that about 10% of cats I've seen are actually at a healthy weight. Get a good one toy and play with your cat every day and for god's sake limit how much they eat. Also, treats are supposed to be less than 10% of your pet's caloric intake. Cool it with the treats. Sadly a lot of children get the same treatment. Doctor here. Don't stop your medications by yourself. Just don't. No matter how good you feel. Patients stop antibiotics and relapse. So many resistant TB cases here. Stop taking insulin and come with DKA. Stop taking antihypertensives and get a stroke. Don't stop any drug unless cleared prior with your doctor. Most of the diseases can only be managed. They can't really be cured. If you have diabetes, get sugar levels tested at least once a month. Don't ignore it. Don't mix alcohol and antidepressants. Also, no matter how bad it is, we have seen worse. Don't be ashamed. Pull out doesn't mean she won't get pregnant. Precum has sperm too. Last, if you see anyone vomiting and loss conscious, turn them to their side. Less chances of it entering lungs. RPH here. Do not keep your medicine in your medicine cabinet in your bathroom. The steam from a shower and the temperature fluctuations will degrade your medication. Keep them in a cool dry place away from direct sunlight. Also look through your OTC items in your house and clean out the expired drugs and restock your basics. Ibuprofen, acetaminophen, pepto, eye drops, etc. I may be alone in this. But I want my patients to know that there is no possible way I can keep up with all the medical advances and new studies that are out there, and I also want them to know that there are thousands of conditions that I learned about in medical school that I've forgotten because I've never seen or recognized them in practice. This is important, because my patients frequently apologize for looking up things on the internet. No, don't apologize. I want you to research your condition. I want you to look things up. I want you to know about new treatments, new research, and alternative medications. Because often I don't. I may not agree with the things you've read, and that's fine too. Ask me about things you've read and the picture you found that looks like your ash. I can't tell you how many times a patient has come to me with a suggestion about a possible explanation for symptoms because they read about it on the internet that turned out to be a correct or at least reasonable guess. Please educate yourselves about yourselves. Some good websites are the CDC website and AAFP.org, the American Academy of Family Practice, and if your doctor is offended that you're trying to be educated, get a different doctor. Source, I'm a doctor. Smoking not only causes cancer, but also arteriosclerosis, COPD and multiple other problems you're much more likely to encounter when smoking. 
keep an up to date list of all the medication you take, including doses, and bring it with you whenever you are seeking health care. If you say that you take two white pills and an orange one, that's so vague as to be useless. Being involved in your own care by making sure to have specific and accurate information is very helpful. In a situation where first aid is required it is better to do something than to be scared and not do anything. You might save someone's life. You have been visited by the soul of Game the Dog. Comment sleep well papa. You will be missed for heavenly borks throughout your whole life.